Hey everybody, it's your girl Herbal Farm Sister. Hey everybody, it's your girl Urban Farm Sister. So today I'm back with another episode of Bugging Out with Nadia. So today we're gonna to talk about insects that actually infest brassica plants. So what exactly are brassica plants? Well, brassica plants are the plants that include collards, mustard, kale, turnip, as well as broccoli, cauliflower, and other plants. There are a lot of insects that actually infest these particular plants and I know a lot of you are growing these especially for your fall gardens and are experiencing a lot of headache right now with insects feeding on your leaves. So we're going to talk about some of those insects that actually infest. There's caterpillars, there's harlequin bugs, there's aphids, and there's also uh, flea beetles. So we're going to start with talking about caterpillars. So caterpillars are the larval stage of moths and butterflies. Three common uh, caterpillars that feed on uh, brassica plants are the cabbage worm, the cross stripe cabbage worm, and the cabbage looper. Now there are many others, but these are the most common. Um, first we're going to talk about the cabbage worm. So when you guys are outside and you see these white butterflies flying over your garden or flying through your neighborhood. Those butterflies, also known as the small cabbage white butterfly, are the parents of the cabbage worms. So what happens is when you see them flying over your garden, what are you actually seeing is, if you see more than one, you're seeing them mate, but then you're also seeing the females seek out their host plants. So caterpillars are host specific, which means a lot of them feed only on specific type of plants. The cabbage worm, its host plant is brassica plants. So the female caterpillar, once she has mated, will go and try to find brassica plants to lay her eggs on. So once she finds that uh, plant, she'll lay an egg on the underside of a leaf, a single egg, and she'll go around and she'll keep flying around until she finds uh, enough brassica plants to lay the eggs that she's gonna lay for that day. Um, it takes about three days for the eggs to hatch, and what comes out is a little tiny caterpillar and it'll be on the underside of the leaves. So a lot of times people, they do not notice that they have cabbage worm butterfly uh, larva on their plants because the caterpillars are small and they're doing a, just a little bit of damage at this point in time after they hatch. They're also feeding on the underside of the leaves so you won't notice them if you're only looking at the top side. As they uh, go through instars, which is means they shed skin and they get bigger, the caterpillar starts to consume more and more of those plant leaves and that's when they become more apparent because of the damage that they cause. Uh, once they get so big, what they'll do is they'll actually come to the other side of the leaf and they'll actually live on the uh, top part of the plant. Um, what they do is they feed on those leaves and they'll defoliate the leaves. Now if you have a plant that's stressed or you have a plant that's young, and if you have a lot of caterpillars on that particular plant, what will happen is they can actually overtake the plant and kill it. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to uh, look at the plant, investigate both sides of the leaves, whether it's a cabbage plant or if it's a, a collard green plant or whatever. You want to just make sure that you're looking for all of uh, any, any caterpillars or any other insects that may be present that be causing damage. So once you find a caterpillar, um, there's a few things that you can do. First of all, if you see the caterpillar, and it's a pretty decent size one, you want to take it off of there. Uh, cabbage white, butterfly, larva, they do not bite. Um, they're not toxic or anything, so you can pick them up and handle them. Um, if you're squeamish about picking up the caterpillar, you can always go and you know get some gloves or if it's, if it's uh, on a leaf and you don't want to touch it, you can cut that leaf off if the plant has a lot of leaves. Now if it doesn't have a lot of leaves, I would suggest that you leave it on there. Um, with the caterpillar, if you have um, animals like chickens or lizards or something, you can feed those caterpillars to those animals and they'll eat them. Or you can just, you know, smash them. Whatever you feel like doing to get rid of them, you can do that. 
Um, a lot of times people, they'll actually grow separate brassica plants and they'll put those on those plants so they can feed and carry out their life process and turn it into a butterfly. But it's up to you what you do with it. So when it comes to the cross stripe cabbage uh, worm, this is actually the larva of a uh, brownish colored moth that you may see during the day uh, crawling on the plants. They're usually nocturnal though, um, but I have, when I've gone outside, uh, disturbed them and seen them moving on the plant as well. But what they do is they lay their eggs on the plant and a, a caterpillar emerges. It's like a yellowish, orangish color when it first comes out, but as it matures, it becomes this striped black and white with green on the side of its body uh, caterpillar. And what separates them from the green cabbage worms that you find from you, you know, the uh, cabbage white butterflies is that these particular bu caterpillars, they actually like to stay in the center of the plant. So if you have a, 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 say a collard plant and you have a lot of damage in the center, especially where the plant is actually growing, that's where those caterpillars stay. The first indicator that you have a caterpillar down in there is that you'll actually see what is called caterpillar frass, which is the caterpillar, caterpillar droppings. Um, there'll be little green balls and they'll be all over the place because as, as the caterpillar eats, it just comes out the other end. Also, you'll notice damage on new growth. Uh, the, new, the new leaves will have a lot of damage in the center. Um, it'll look like skeletonizing damage at first and then it'll just be big holes that'll develop. Um, and that's an indicator that you probably have the uh, striped, uh, cross striped cabbage worm. Um, like I say, during the day, they kind of hang out in the center of the plant. So what you want to do if you're doing an inspection is you'll want to go down, look in the center of the plant, turn over and look inside the leaves that, are, that have not really emerged yet. They're still kind of curled up. Look in those curls and you'll actually find those caterpillars. You'll also find them on the underside of the bigger leaves that you know have developed already. And you just wanna turn those over and you'll see them actually feeding on there. And here I have a video showing what they actually look like and how they actually you know, are inside of the plant themselves. So uh, when you're looking for them, you'll know that yes, this is a striped cabbage, cabbage worm or I have a uh, you know, green cabbage uh, butterfly uh, caterpillar. Now the cabbage looper, it is actually uh, a green caterpillar also. It has many host plants, but brassica plants are one of their host plants. Um, but they will feed on a multitude of things. So you'll hear about cabbage loopers on a multitude of different crops that are grown. Um, but they do the same damage, they feed on leaves. So what they look like, they're actually little green caterpillars and they look like inchworms. So they do that, that funny crawling where they kind of crawl and they inch their back up and then they uh, straighten out and then they inch up again. Um, and again, they damage leaves. Uh, you'll see leaf, holes in the leaves as well as, you know, defoliation. Um, and if you have a lot of them, if you have a, a small plant that's not mature, they can cause a lot of damage that can either stunt growth or eventually kill the plant. So you want to make sure you remove them as well. So anytime you see any of these caterpillars or any caterpillars, you want to make sure you remove the caterpillars. But there is some uh, methods of treatment that you can use to actually control them. So first off, we're going to talk about uh, what is known as uh, integrated pest management, which is called IPM. Uh, IPM, like I said, stands for integrated pest management. It's where you use different techniques to prevent insect damage, whether it be mechanical, um, chemical, all types of different methods that are used. And we want to make chemical your last resort. So when it comes to caterpillars, as well as the other insects we're going to talk about, uh, the first thing, line of defense, is always put up a barrier. So when you first plant your brassica plants, when they're small, if you planted them in an area that hadn't had brassica plants there the year before, you're good. Uh, if you plant them in the same area as you had brassica plants the year before, um, what you're going to probably do is you're going to plant them right in the middle of where you had those pests. And so those pests, there's going to be eggs as well as, you know, adults and things that are there waiting for those brassica plants to return. So you probably want to rotate your crops to another area. Um, but if you're planting them in a new spot and um, they haven't been introduced to any insects or anything yet, you can use what are called mechanical barriers where um, uh, you can put up a, a barrier between the insect and the plant. So one thing you can use is insect netting where you can make little cages around your plants 
and those cages will uh, prevent access to the insects as well as some small animals and things like that. Um, so I have a picture here of one of my Instagram followers. If you want to look at that, they actually built some cages around their brassica plants and they've been uh, protecting them from caterpillars as well as uh, flea beetles and all types of other insects that feed on them. They look very healthy and happy. And I was proud of them that they actually made those cages. I love them. Um, but what you can do is take two by fours. You can buy this netting, this particular netting, like at a um, fabric store. They actually sell what is called insect netting, but it can be kind of expensive if you get that. But if you go to the um, fabric store or you go online, you can find bolts of netting. And all you're trying to do is just get netting that's going to prevent insect access to it. So it'll have little tiny holes so the insects can't get through there. Now, if you come to the point where you didn't put up a barrier and you're starting to experience damage to your plants, you're going to have to use some type of um, uh, mechanical control, well, it's chemical, um, uh, something that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to actually remove those insects. So when it comes to the caterpillars, like I say, the first line of defense is once you find them is to hand remove them. Everybody's not going to want to do that because everybody doesn't want to touch insects. They don't bother me. I'm an entomologist, so I'm, I'm touching insects all the time. But that's the first line of defense is to get them off your plants. Now, once you get them off your plants, I'm going to suggest that you spray um, uh, a product on them. Um, it's called, um, it's a bacteria. It's a, a biological control. And the bacteria is called Bacillus thuringiensis. It's uh, BT for short. Uh, BT bacteria, there's multiple different kinds that target specific insects, but this particular one is a uh, BT um, Kerstaki, and it's, this specifically targets caterpillars. So you can spray this on not just your brassica plants, but you can spray it on other plants that experience cap caterpillar damage. Just know that spraying this kills caterpillars, so that means when you're killing caterpillars, you're not going to have butterflies and moths. So just know that. But I know that caterpillars can become a nuisance, especially on plants that you're going to, you know, consume. They can become a nuisance because they're you're destroying the leaves and things like that. Um, with this, uh, the BT comes in different brands. This particular brand is called Safer Brand. You can purchase this on uh, Amazon, and I'll have a link to that if you'd like to purchase it. Um, but basically what you'll do, you'll take this, uh, there's a measurement on here, depending on what you're using it for, if it's for a vegetable garden versus if you're going to use it on trees or if you're going to use it on, uh, ornamental plants and things, there's different measurements that you use, uh, to, um, make sure that you're getting the right amount of, uh, treatment. So you'll have your container of this, and then you'll want to go and purchase one of these little sprayers. So these sprayers, you can buy them at Home Depot, but you can also get them off Amazon, and I'll provide a link for that as well. Um, and it holds a gallon of water. So basically, you'll fill it up to the gallon line, um, which is right here. And then you'll add the BT amount that is suggested for whatever type of plant you're trying to put it on. Uh, I believe with the fruits and vegetables uh, that are growing in a garden, I think it's like two teaspoons, but I don't don't quote me on that actually look at the directions when you're mixing this up you'll take it you'll mix it up in there and then you'll just spray using the sprayer on here you will spray the um, the BT water solution onto your leaves front and uh, the tops and the bottoms you want to make sure you're spraying the whole plant saturating the plant so how this works is the BT bacteria in this container there are actually spores the spores, once they're in the water, will actually um, come to life and you'll have actually bacteria, um, you know, dividing and reproducing, as well as there's also toxin, the toxin that this particular bacteria makes that's toxic to caterpillars. Um, the toxin will, um, what happens is the caterpillars, they will have to still feed on your plants. So that's why I say it's very important that you remove any big ones that you see because they're the ones going to be damaging your plants the most you'll want to remove those but any any time the caterpillar feeds on this one the bt is present what happens is they ingest it it goes down to their gut and it reacts with their stomach at uh well their stomachs are actually alkaline their, their ph is like nine or ten or something like that 
um, it'll react with that and the bacteria will start to um, reproduce in their gut as well as those toxins will be present and then it'll stop the caterpillar from feeding and eventually it'll get become toxic it's kind of like when people get botulism uh, it does the same thing uh, it gets into your system and it, it, it kind of like just prevents you from eating and functioning things and eventually it'll kill you and that's what it does to the caterpillars but it could take 24 to 48 hours before it takes effect so for that time frame the caterpillar could still be uh, chewing on your plants and still damaging it once they once they become toxic they'll stop feeding and then they'll drop off and sometimes when you go back the next day or two you'll see caterpillars laying on the bottom of the uh the uh garden on the ground where they you know succumb to the uh, toxin of the uh, bacteria to apply this you're going to have to do it at least every 10 to 14 days that's the life cycle of the uh you know it takes from the time another maybe a caterpillar i mean butterfly comes in lays eggs let them hatch and things so you want to make sure you're you're covering all generations also if it rains you're going to have to apply this more often um, this bacteria does not infect or bother humans it is not dangerous to bees and things as well it's only uh it only affects caterpillars so this will affect monarch caterpillars so if you have an area that has monarchs in it you may not want to spray this in an area because it will uh, affect those caterpillars as well um, but it's a very good product it's biological control it's safe for the environment and you can actually use it even up to day up, up to the day of harvest you can spray it, apply it to your plants and it won't be, become toxic or anything to you all right so that's caterpillar so those caterpillars that i talked about like i said they're whole specific the uh cabbage worm is but the uh craw the um cabbage looper it can have many hosts but this product will work on them on those other plants as well okay so this concludes today's video uh, the next video will be covering flea beetles so if you have any questions you can send me an email at urbanfarmsister at gmail.com